It's very spacious in the writing in terms of tonality. There's kind of a little bit of hopefulness in it too, but um, there's also like an underlying bleakness, which I guess is kind of how a lot of people feel now. I mean, everything feels very bleak, um, but people are clinging on to hope that stuff will go back to normal. I think things won't go back to the same normal that we're used to, that, that historically has never happened um, in the context of a pandemic. Uh, but we'll eventually get back to some sense of stability. It'll just be very different. So um, it's hard to know what that's going to look like at the moment because things keep changing. Um, it's hard to predict what's happening. Uh, and I guess that's sort of the general feeling. And that's, that's kind of what a lot of this music um, says as well, and I think that's what Frank is trying to convey with, with what he's written. want to participate in that um, self-isolation project was because I, I needed challenges. I wanted to, to, to explore new repertoire and to also see how one can deal with oneself in a way because I mean I'm used to I'm, I'm a, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm used to be on my own because um, that's that's okay. Just not being able to share what you used to do with others, and that's fundamental because um, I'm mainly an orchestra player, and um, of course that I was greatly missing, or I am greatly missing because it's still going on. I wanted to do the project because I had seen so many other people post. And even though I didn't know a lot of the people on the playlist that he started to compile, I felt like there are other people that are also working on this piece of music, like right now, same time. Um, all of our efforts are kind of going into the universe. And it sounds like very artsy or whatever, but it gave me the energy and the desire to record. And the piece is really good. <laughs> And uh, I loved to, to participate to the project. I, I immediately um, agree, agreed with the, with the propose. And uh, I, I think it, it is a, a, a very, very interesting experience, a sharing moment with other musicians, with other uh, countries, <laughs> a kind of uh, cross life between uh, me and uh, Frank and other uh, uh, and the other musicians uh, all around the world. Uh, I I feel now I have been part of a, of a, a, a nice story, a positive tales during during the pandemic. For where I am in my life as a musician. Um, I, I, it, it's overwhelming how life-changing that is and is going to be. And, and I think it just the, the newness of it, the relevance simply for this time, something for this time, because everything feels like it's being taken away. And this was a gift that 
It was a, a gift to all of us who have been playing his piece, um, as opposed to the music that's been, that we've had to walk away from. I think it might have been a, a Wednesday or Thursday night, hearing that the NBA was canceling all its games. And I just had this sinking feeling. That was the moment it became real for me because I thought, for sure, if they're canceling something that popular with that much money invested in doing those things, concerts are not going to make it. I mean, if they can't have an arena full of people, we're not going to be able to have halls full of people. And then I realized, wow, this is, this is really happening. And so all of a sudden, it was just like someone put their hand on a big power switch and just honked it to off. And everything stopped. And I just felt powerless. Like this, this thing was happening that I didn't like, and there's, there was just nothing I could do about it. When se produjo el confinamiento, lo primero que escuché o que intentaba oír era el silencio que, que había en las calles. Había una sensación de vacío. Me sentía como espectador desde la ventana de mi casa y parecía que la vida se había detenido. Aún más, me sentía como un refugiado en tiempos de guerra. Sentía como una amenaza invisible, como si al salir de casa algo me fuera a atacar. Antes del confinamiento no sentía ninguna amenaza, me sentía libre, quedaba con mis amigos, hacía música y se respiraba en la calle un clima de alegría. El bullicio de la gente te envolvía. La vida tenía un color claro. So before the pandemic, I, in, in orchestras, usually there are two bassoons. And I would play second bassoon a lot of the time. So when the pandemic happened, um, there was a lot of these projects where they would kind of like take like one instrument out of things. And since I was usually the second one, I didn't do any of those. And, you know, I just, it took me a second to kind of be like, well, exactly who am I? And also like trying to like, start an online presence. It was sort of like, you know, um, a friend of mine was like, well, you need to have an identity. And it's like, well, who am I? I don't know. And it, you know, it did give me some time, especially when I did have sort of have the bassoon in the case being like, well, I need to figure this out. And in a way, I probably should have done that before the pandemic too, sort of like, you know what, but it, it definitely, you know, was a catalyst for, you know, being able to explore exactly what I am and what my relationship to the instrument is. I, I would say absolutely that uh, for me, art and music and, and telling storytelling and creation, it's, it's a kind of crisis management that I use absolutely when the going gets tough. And I think I recognized that this was a crisis when we were all, you know, when I went from having, you know, a job or mo five jobs to zero jobs. Um, I recognized it was a crisis, and I also recognized that it was going to be a long crisis. And realizing that I, I needed to and that I wanted to, whatever it was, I didn't want to spend the next year feeling sorry for myself for sinking further into that period. And so really going back and thinking, well, I've got to look, I've got to decide what, what, what things do I want to explore for me, not because I'm being paid to do them or asked to do them, but what things do I want to explore for me. And I decided I got to figure out a way to create. And, and without anybody giving me permission to, I think that's 
maybe been my fault as an artist before. I was always waiting for someone to give me permission to, to hire me, to give me a direction, to give me the music they want me to interpret or, or whatever. And this was kind of, it was kind of fun new territory of, well, I'm going to make choices and, and see where they lead. In the initial stages of the pandemic, it was me just grasping for some sort of semblance of normalcy with the creative process, with creating in general, um, and not having the outlet of uh, the orchestra, like my orchestra was closed down, um, and any orchestras that I sub with are also closed down, and so it's like, well, what do I do? Okay, well, I'm gonna go back to my own repertoire, and I'm pulling stuff madly off the shelf, just playing and playing and playing and hoping to find something new. Um, and sometimes I did, but sometimes I didn't, and that was a really frustrating process. <laughs> um, but I think that just everything having to be simplified in life around has affected my approach to how I see everything, musically speaking. Um, so perhaps in pre-COVID days, um, I might be looking at things like just chord structures and just very, very nitty gritty details. Um, but now I think just like in life where you kind of sit back and you go, oh, this is what life could be without the pandemic. I sat back from my score and go, you know what, there's a lot more than just this chord structure thing and those things are important, but perhaps there's something bigger to be said um, or to be looked at. Community is, is exactly what's under threat by the pandemic. Um, and that's what I felt the loss of so very strongly. My feeling is that the value of culture and especially the value of music is to remind us that we're part of each other. And that can happen through just listening to music. Some of the most profound musical experiences can be when you're alone listening to a recording. However, um, that's just a reminder of the reality, which is that these experiences are actually shared. Um, in classical music, we're very, we remain very attached to unamplified music. And I think that's so important because we're actually experiencing the space that we're in in real time with real people. We're reminding ourselves that we're living beings sharing physical space. And there's no uh, escape from that. Um, all of the other alternatives of how to connect are wonderful, but I think that the actual presence together in real space is the only way to, to really be fully human, to be fully in community. And I think that that's, uh, that's something we have to approximate as best we can in these times and remember how important it is for when we can do it again. I'm a pack animal. I'm, I'm so used to going out on stage and being with 90 other people. All putting our efforts in towards one colossal goal. So it's really bizarre. I haven't played alone on the stage of RTH since my audition 10 years ago. It might sound a little trite, but I, I've just realized how much I took for granted. I was really looking forward to this year. It was going to be my 10th season with the Toronto Symphony, and that just felt like such a cool achievement. And it, it had just flown by, but I've had the time and the space and the emptiness to really think about why those 10 years were special and think about the very best parts of that and the parts I miss the most. And yeah, it's, it's about art. It's certainly about having a vehicle for expressing myself, you know, the horn. Um, but almost equally, it's about the tiny little exchanges I have at work with people, the human interaction and just, I miss that almost more than playing, is just having human connection, both with our instruments in our hands and just 
sharing a joke backstage, just normal little things, actually being able to see somebody smile. Those are the things I'm finding I miss the most. So where I want to go artistically is as much about using my horn as it is about being back with those people again. I mean, right now it's easy to be cynical about a lot of things going on in the world, but we're still in a pandemic. We see the, the hope, so we have, but we haven't actually gotten to that point yet where we can, you know, celebrate. And so right now, of course, everybody can be seeing, seemingly doom and gloom about things. But wow, I mean, what's coming up? There's only one thing coming up, and that's this rebirth, and that's this people just wanting to throw the doors open and go sit in a hall or go to a gallery and, or, and uh, go to a theater and watch dance or music. And, and they may even, who knows, and I hope this is the case, they may even take it upon themselves to become artists. But like I said, for artists, it's just, this is what I mean by coming back to this Renaissance because Okay, so we've spent X amount of time in this pandemic bettering our, our art. What are we going to do with it after that? We must do something with it. We have to share it. And that's what I mean. In, in the future, it's going to be amazing. This, this explosion of quality uh, human expression. Well, an interesting thought that you just made me consider that I hadn't thought of before is that we're all living through this shared experience. Everyone in the world, everyone's experience is different in some way, but we're all going through the same thing. So we're all going to look for that in the art that we create and in the art that we listen to or see. So it's kind of a way that art will actually unite us a little bit more now because we've had this shared experience together. I think this has been a year where people have gotten kinder, um, or at least when some of the panic sort of subsided, people people have gotten kinder. We've spent more time with family, with loved ones. We've cared more. We've looked further inside and and explored our our lives more. And I I don't want to go back to just just running from one thing to the next to just being busy to to rehearsing that so that's ready before that happens and then this happens and then um, you know whatever Joe job comes in between it, it's I, I want to remember remember this it, the necessity to to communicate is is larger than 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 it used to be before even so yeah that's all I can say for for this and um Let's keep going on, because um, it can't be the moment that the arts culture dies. So that uh, for me, that is no option. For those of us who remember the dance, oh, the promise of transcendence is a shame. What's happening is that we are becoming a people that are reserved and inward and becoming afraid. And fear can't breed anything altruistic. Fear can't breed anything hopeful. Fear just leads to, 
to base nature violence. And so it will take a time like this for us to dig deep and decide to be human beings, to love, to hope, to reach out, to think for ourselves, to take the time to value your own opinion and to take that opinion and find a way to make good, not conflict. And look at what events are happening. I think we're around the world, we're gonna need to really look at what's happening around the world and not feel like we're helpless and hopeless, but see that we're more than that. See that we're human and really um, dig deep to face real challenges. And as artists, I think we can stand front in line in that discussion if we choose to if we have the courage. That's what I'll say.